So we miss Mr. Abdul Koroma from um, Liberia. Can I, can you show us your badge, please? Your name badge. Yes, that is the name badge. Uh, Abdul Hafiz Koroma. Okay. So I understand that you are have a bit of knowledge about the uh, operation in Liberia which started with um, use of flow mobile telephones to map the uh, uh, up to 10,000 water points I understand in yes. Liberia uh, a few years ago. Yes. So um, what is happening to the uh, to, you know to uh, to the what 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 you get back from that in the planning uh, right now in the current monitoring program of the yeah. country. All right. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much again, and it's it's a pleasure to, to be here with you um, uh, in Den Haag. Um, one of the things I would like to point out briefly is how how ten thousand water points were able to contribute to to planning in, in Liberia, and that's quite briefly. Uh, the number of actors in the water, sanitation and hygiene sector, we're very happy to know that the government has finally inventorized uh, water points in, in Liberia. And imagine civil society who use such data to call on lawmakers, you know, to make good commitments on providing water services in, 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 in their respective uh, districts. The NGOs could use that to plan for, for investments, uh, where to target excess needs. Government could also use that to increase uh, funding to, to the sector. So that was very good. And in terms of how that has evolved over, over a period, um, with databases it's always good if you can update the information so that um, you always have current uh, new information. But what the government of Liberia has now done is to use a second version of field level operation watch that we use to map these water points. Uh, that version has a component of continuous monitoring uh, embedded. That enables us to go back to points that were previously mapped and, and use the information, collect new information, update the points. What we've done to start that process is to do a training, a massive training of uh, NGOs. NGOs are quite useful in, in, in monitoring. NGOs build most of the water points. Governments also do that. But with NGOs now in the updating process, we not only get information on water points that were broken down or that were constructed, now we're getting uh, information on new constructions also. So if an NGO can go around right there, start a water pro project, we have that information immediately sent to our uh, dashboard. We've also engaged ACVU to do a training uh, of local staff. Uh, that lo the local staff in Liberia can now do dashboard analysis, can now do survey data development, and they can also carry out actual mapping independently, but with a close collaboration with the, the developers. So yeah, we've, we've done a lot of new things with the tools, and we've updated databases, and now we're in the process of piloting an urban wash program uh, using the tools. Okay, how many how many people have been trained recently in that context? Then um, we targeted fifty NGOs and over twenty five representatives from government, and each of these NGOs were trained in two set of tools from Agbo, uh, Field Level Operation Watch, and RSR, which is really simple reporting. So we're not only getting water points data coming in, we're also getting actual small online reports using RSR about what the project uh, is all about. So if you look at the story, the monitoring story in Liberia, you have water point database, an inventory with all the analysis. You have RSR that tells you how we got there. In last year or so, we can only see the database of 10,000 points. Now we can see a database with flow. And RSR that tells us the story about how this happened. So I think these are two very interesting new developments in Liberia that we're happy to share our, our um, experiences you know, using them to the rest of the world. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Dick, for the opportunity.